Hello, hello! It's Password Dots. It's been a little while. Uh, how are you doing? How's your sister? She hanging in there? Great. Everyone, I'm filming out of a brand new studio in a brand new house. Still a little bit of uh, unpacking to do. Uh, just a little bit. It's coming along. But it's been so long since I put out a Let's Stitch video, I uh, just wanted to jump back into things. So, um, this is this is all feeling a little, well, not safe. A little, that didn't really. Uh, I got a couple of commissions to do, a couple of Korok dolls, and uh, I figured why not have a little video where um, I just make those. I've already got a video, uh, a tutorial. Now I've got a tutorial on how to make Korok dolls from a few years ago. You can still watch that. That's still good. That's still going to be like a tutorial. I mean, it's a little old, but a little 720p is not going to hurt nobody. So this is just going to be a fun little video where uh, I, I make these dolls and then, uh, I don't know, I'm going to talk about Zelda something. It's going to be a good time. We're going to we're gonna have some, some fun. Whoa, woo. Oh, I, could, I probably could have caught that. Wait. Huh. Ah! ah! Uh -oh. Enough futzing around. We're going to get started, okay? Okay. Let me just go over the supplies real quick. These socks are a statement brand from the website Bold Socks. They're a fantastic resource for socks. This is not an ad, I just like them a lot. Every pair of socks bought helps them supply water to places in Africa that need it. They're fairly priced, well crafted, and you earn rewards as well as bulk discounts. I cannot recommend them enough. The felt is basic felt from Michaels, big deal. I buy from Joann's as well, it's the same thing. Sandwiched between two layers of felt will be some black fabric. I've got a pair of boxer shorts. These were never worn. Don't look at me like some kind of weirdo. See, look, they're already, they're, they're cut up from other dolls. Come on, like, grow up, geez. Anyway, this is some stuffing that I'm using. Plush fiber fill, I keep it banded to save space. I know, I know what it looks like. Don't even be so immature. No! We all need some scissors, obvi. Some chopsticks to work with the small spaces, uh, a needle or two, some thread. I've got tan and some other colors for the, for the leaves. Finally, I've got several dual head markers, mostly Prismacolor, but I've got cheaper artist loft ones that work just fine. That's it, bin for scrap, corkboard tray. This is all in my original Korok video. Go watch that, all right? Let's talk some heckin' Zelda! So the most endearing factor to Breath of the Wild is its commitment to a player-guided atmosphere. The main quest is maybe six plot points, and you don't even have to follow it. As soon as you're done with the tutorial, you can skip all the fluff, kill Ganon, and scroll the credits. It brought genuine mystery back to the series and gave you full reign over a vast and dynamic landscape. I combed every square inch of that map. I rarely traveled on the roads. Exploring Hyrule in my own way was thrilling, and now I have a gaming journey with Zelda that's unique to me. I love that. Now the sequel, I mean, we don't know how direct it is after the first game, but I feel as though it couldn't be more than a year. And from what we've seen, it may be on the same map. Though it couldn't be the exact map, right? That would take away from what made the first game so great. We can't rediscover these environments unless maybe the game takes things underground. It seems to be a logical next step based on the lore of the game. The Sheikah technology was unearthed from the ground. There are two research facilities in Hyrule dedicated to researching that technology. The dungeons exist either underground or inside walking fortresses that came from, yes, the ground. Zelda's clearly interested in Sheikah technology. They find Ganondorf's haunted corpse underground. Huh? Eh? and a focus on spelunking expeditions would address the problem that a number of Zelda fans had with Breath of the Wild by adding some labyrinthian dungeon crawls. Now this all ties into the thing I really want to see out of the sequel. If the map is going to be the same, the absence of the calamity is going to have a huge effect on the environment. There's no more blood moon, enemies won't run rampant, the guardians are either destroyed or under Hylian control, maybe, and so the citizens aren't living under terror. They can reclaim the ruined towns, they can rebuild their society. Even if it's just a year coming to pass, civilization will start to take root again. 
Hyrule will be filled with music and activity. Instead of wandering hostile fields and wastelands, we can hitch rides on carriages, maybe even a train, to stations that used to be humble horse stables. And so the wilderness lives on when the player travels underground. No music, no civilization, we are, once again, alone. Like any good sequel, we get to experience growth. Then, we have to leave it behind to continue battling the unknown. And then we've got whatever mystical forces were holding Ganondorf down in a well, with all the glowy hands and Sheikah mummy jewelry. I wasn't a fan of the Yiga clan in implementation, but I loved what they were able to bring to the table as far as warring factions of the Sheikah are concerned. It would be great to see that tension come to a head with Link and Zelda at the center of it. Maybe Ganondorf is a casualty of those dark Sheikah forces? I know that he's a god incarnate, but it would be interesting for Ganondorf to have been caught up in something that he, in his mortal body, doesn't really comprehend. And the overreaching threat is actually the ancient Sheikah that the King of Hyrule always mistrusted. Wait, pause for a sec, because you may notice here that one of my Koroks is a little different from the others. Someone asked if I could make their Korok look like a robot, which I thought was a super cool prompt and my imagination ran away from me, so I just want to point out how my little deviation on the forum went down. I got these gray argyle socks, I think from eBay. They're a bit smoother than the tan ones, more synthetic, but while they aren't as comfortable to wear, they make great material for a Robo Korok. Robok. Core bot. Robo rock. I mapped out a rough outline of the antenna shape since I didn't want to mess that up. I didn't follow it too closely, but it turned out just fine. Anyway, that's the difference. Core robot. Crowbot. Now, this isn't mandatory, but giving each of your Koroks a boop before applying the leaves is said to bring great prosperity to your crops and your marriage, so I do encourage some generous boopage. Anyway, back to talking about Zerud. I've noticed a lot of fan discussion over a sympathetic Ganondorf. I would be down with that. Not necessarily a good guy, but someone you can maybe relate to on some level. And story-wise, it's a great pivot off the first game to be somewhat united, even reliant on the help of the man who tried to kill you. Not groundbreaking stuff by any means, but it's a change of pace for the series. A breath, a fresh air, if you will. Oh my god, what if the sequel is called Breath of Fresh Air? I also imagine that the four new champions are going to play a bigger role in the sequel. <gasps> Wouldn't a CPU partner-up mechanic be cool? Like, uh, I, well, I don't know, like you get access to different abilities based on your companion? Huh? Even if it's, I don't know, restricted to certain dungeons or tasks, that'd be cool, right? It's like Link and Zelda are putting the band back together, I don't know. Now, speaking of new moves, these caverns have got to contain new runes. I mean, expanding the toolkit with the sequel is a given. What those new runes could be, I wouldn't even want to guess, but the three main runes from the first game were about physics, and there's one piece of equipment that Link has had for almost every adventure that would be an amazing addition to this game. Imagine, if you will, coming to a deep chasm with no way around, you whip out your runes, and shwabam! Link reaches out with his m***ing hookshot. And you know how Link was able to get upgraded versions of his runes? Hookshot Plus is kapow! Double hookshot, turn this sequel into Spider-Man to the movie the game. Oh, speaking of equipment, th this is a nitpicky thing, but if I could upgrade or at least dye the special clothing, that'd be excellent. It was kind of a bummer to get the gear like the Dark Link outfit and not be able to wear it because its armor rating is so low. I need more reasons to visit my fairy babes! Oh, God, Nintendo, please tell me the gray fairies are going to be in the sequel. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but I will literally die without them. And I feel weird saying this because I never liked fishing in Zelda games, but I would love to get some traditional fishinal into the sequel. Catching them like a bear in the river or an Appalachian moonshiner was fun, but casting a line and waiting for the bite has a reward of its own. In fact, bring some other minigames back. 
Let's do something with bombs. Let's do some diving quests, uh, more camera quests. Let's sprinkle in even more activities for us to get into when we meet up with townspeople. Also, it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway, cause we're all thinking it, everybody wants it, Nintendo knows it, Alnuma knows it, playable Zelda. That's just, give us the Zelda. Is that gonna happen? It's definitely possible. Is anything I said here gonna come to fruition? I don't know. Maybe you're watching this video from 2021. You tell me. Those of you in 2021, is the game out? Has Prime 4 been released? Well, that is all the time that I have got. Uh, it's time to package these little guys up and send them off to their new homes. So I'm um, gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, thanks so much for hanging out with me, everybody. Uh, let me know what you are looking forward to in Breath of the Wild 2, or let me know if you're done with Breath of the Wild and uh, you hate it, uh, and therefore you hate me for liking it. Uh, just let me know either way. So, okay, I'm gonna send these guys out, and then I'm gonna, uh, like, I don't know, eat some cereal or something, okay? See you later. Keep making stuff.